been doing this for about 20 plus years and I feel like this is uh, this is definitely one of the most challenging uh, situations we found ourselves in. So uh, we're going to muscle through this uh, village meeting the best we can, uh, as we always do. Um, and uh, we're going to modify things a little bit. Uh, we will start off with Employee of the Month. Um, and I will tell you that this Employee of the Month for the month of March comes to us from security. Yes. And I'm going to read some of the comments that were made by this person's co-workers, supervisor, and residents. She is friendly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> she is out, outgoing. She is honest. She is hardworking. She is courteous. She is kind. She is a wonderful co-worker and exceptional employee for these reasons and many more. She deserves to be the employee of the month. Or winner this month is Jovita Sierra. <laughs> She has done a marvelous job of not only supporting all of you as residents, but also supporting the foundation and its work. So if you'll join me in saying thank you, Barbara. For okay, next up, uh, what have we been doing? We had a retreat. Uh, we weren't retreating in the literal sense. This was more getting together and making sure that what we're doing is really serving the interests of both the village and you as residents as well as we can. Cole connected us with uh, a young lady named uh, Pam Kester. Pam is the executive director of Leading Age that works with a lot of retirement and aging communities uh, to provide not only health services but education and housing for them. She does a lot of work in terms of facilitating uh, retreats like the one we had. So we had a subcommittee that Arlene Morris chaired that met with her for, we started November 25th, started planning for the retreat, and finally had it underway and ready to go. And we spent 12 hours on February 27th and 28th working with her and working together to see if we couldn't accomplish some things. One of the things we were very grateful for 
Uh, we know how busy both Cole and Emily are. They were able to take that full 12 hours out of their busy schedule to come in and spend time with us and work side by side with us to make sure we got some work done. So thank you to them. Okay, what did we get done? Uh, what happened during this time period? Okay, the outcomes that came out of there were we really feel like we were able to work together and come up with some mutual <coughs> understandings about how your foundation and the village should be working together to make sure we're serving you and the village as well as we can. I think we took some steps forward that are going to improve communication between the foundation and the village, making sure we're all on the same page. And we also had a chance to kind of align priorities. What are the priorities that the foundation and the village need to be working, you know, cooperatively? And you wonder what you come up with. Here are the priorities that we established. The employee scholarship fund is going to continue to be a high priority for us. Uh, if you go back in time, the foundation was started in 1986. And at the time it started, employee scholarships were an important part of what they did. And it has remained an important part. And we want to make sure that we're continuing and doing all we can with scholarships. So that's going to be a priority. We think also we need to work harder to increase our visibility with you so that you know more about the foundation, who we are, what we're doing, and what's underway. And we're going to invest time and energy in making sure we're doing a better job of communicating with you about that so you are able to ask questions and see what's going on. Uh, the last thing that's going to be a priority is probably one you can identify with, many of you in the room. Uh, just as I came over here today, I had uh, television on and I saw the stock markets continuing to plunge. And like many of you, the foundation has our money, your money, invested in stocks. And our challenge right now is to make sure we're able to meet all of our, do all of the things financially we want to do, and do it in a way that doesn't deplete our principal. Uh, that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, but we've got some really bright people on that foundation board, myself excluded. Uh, <laughs> and they're going to be able to help us get there. So I'm confident that's going to happen. I mentioned the scholarships. Probably the most immediate thing that we're going to have to work on is we've got good news and bad news. The good news is we have a really large number of employees taking advantage of the scholarship program, which is great. However, on the downside, tuitions are going up. Yeah. Yeah. You have grandchildren in school, you know what, what they're faced with in tuition. The other thing that's happening is, I just told you, we're all of a sudden seeing our income is limited. So we're going to have to make some decisions about how do we do this. Now, I can guarantee you, I think, to the person, there's nobody on that foundation board that wants to see the scholarships go away. And we're proud of that history. We're proud of what it does. We enjoy being able to do something to help employees better themselves. And I know there are many of you in the audience who are educators. Even if you're not an educator, you probably know how important education is. And if we can do things to help our employees and make them feel better about themselves, improve their lot in life, we need to be doing that. So we're going to work hard to get that done. We've got a lot of options to look at in terms of how to reach that goal. And I'm confident with the people we have on the board, uh, we're going to put our heads together and come up with a good plan that works so we are able to keep that afloat. But that's basically what we've been up to. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John. I appreciate it, and I really enjoyed our opportunity to uh, go through the retreat together and, and get our goals aligned. And uh, definitely, one of the most important things that we do here is the uh, employee scholarship program. 
and really opening doors for those folks and helping them uh, really grow themselves in situations they may not otherwise have the chance to do. So I'm excited to get behind the, uh, the scholarship program and, and figure out ways that we can possibly enhance it, grow it, and uh, just reach more people ultimately. So thank you. All right, next, I believe we have Ralph. Ralph will be reporting uh, to us as the Vice President of the Residence Council. Please welcome Ralph McMillan to the stage. Council. 
Uh, so normally we do uh, have the other folks come up and uh, have Mark tell us about sales and marketing and uh, Janie tell us about the health center and Emily report on uh, what she's got going on in her departments, but we decided that we would forego that and uh, get right to the point, uh, which is my uh, guess why we have such good attendance here today. And uh, like I said before I started off, I've uh, been in the business for about 23 years and I feel like this is as uh, intense of a situation. Oh. You know what? You're right. Excuse me. I forgot about my buddy, Paul Harding. Paul is here to talk briefly about the Concerned Friends. Excuse me. And please welcome Paul Harding to the Sorry, Paul. Thank you. 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, interrupt uh, Cole's program, except we have a lot of bags back here we hope to be giving away. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about, just a, briefly, Concerned Friends was organized in 1981 by a group of residents and uh, shortly after the village opened. Uh, neighbor helping neighbor, uh, such as services such as shopping, transportation, help with the mail, help with uh, assisting with uh, bank statements and such. Um, and these services were especially valuable for family members if they were not in the area so that they knew that their parents were being taken care of. Um, the, um, a former resident, um, who will go on mentioned, uh, left a sizable donation to concerned friends. And with this money, uh, we are providing uh, every resident uh, in the uh, village with a hospital bag. And it looks like this. Nice, nice bag on the inside. You'll find a set of instructions as to what should be put in the bag. And uh, as I am speaking, if you can remember this, A through F, L will be on the left side, and uh, M through Z will be on the right. And we will be in the uh, lobby uh, a couple of times uh, within the month, on the 12th and the 17th. And so if there's any questions we can answer, when we pass out these bags, but um, it, was, it was not something that we thought of. I know on the board, but I can tell you when uh, that chunk of change came our way, we figured we'd better get rid of it, and then we figured <laughs> that they, these hospital bags were our real names. They'll go to Cunningham and to all the residents, but not to the um, health care center because they have their own bags. So uh, again, uh, just remember that we will be donating, or be distributing, I should say, bags uh, in the in the lobby uh, for two months, and if more, we'll set up some new dates. Thank you very much. All right, I can't imagine a better segue from hospital bags to uh, coronavirus. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Um, you know, I joke around a little bit just to uh, probably keep from crying to some degree, but uh, just to get a feel from the audience, how many people are really, really concerned about this? How many people feel like it's a bunch of uh, do about nothing? Okay, a few. All right, so most people. I, uh, I, I have come full circle. I think anybody that knows me knows I don't get too excited about much. and. Uh, Last night I got a little excited, and I might be too excited. I'll put it out there right now, I could be. Uh, but uh, I have done an absolute 180 degree turnaround uh, from where I was yesterday to where I'm at today. And uh, I think the safest route is to probably treat this as it is a very serious concern, as I do believe it is. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, last night, I'm not here to scare people. I think the worst thing we can do is panic. Heard JD and say earlier today, they, they call it pandemic because the first three letters are pan for panic. Um, and that's not what we want to do because that's not going to do anybody any good. But I do think there are a lot of common sense things most of us probably have been doing, some of us should be doing a better job of. And I uh, just want to kind of share with you what we know. And the reality is, anybody that acts like they know everything are probably full of it because nobody knows, you know, really exactly what's going on much more than the obvious, but uh, I just want to kind of share with you what we've got, things we're working on, uh, things you're going to be seeing roll out here in the near future. Uh, 
all of these things are in favor just to take what we call uh, extreme precautions uh, in a time of uncertainty, uh, and really with the whole goal of keeping the residents uh, safe. Uh, the, the, the crappy part about this whole thing is, uh, you know, nationally, you know, for, for young folks, I don't think it's quite as big of a deal, and unfortunately that's probably fan in the fire, uh, but for the folks we serve here at the village, I think it's a real big deal because that are the, those are the people uh, that, that are at the highest risk. And, and you know, you talk about independent living, well, then you go over to the health center and we're serving the, the, the highest risk of the highest risk. And so we have a, so much skin in the game. This is probably the, uh, uh, that's why I say it's one of the most challenging times because, it, I mean, this really is affecting us more than any other industry almost. I mean, I can't even imagine some of the economic repercussions that are going to take place uh, through the hospitality industry, the cruise ships. Uh, you know, you see the NBA canceled their season last night. That really hit me hard. That is when, when I, not from a, the, the basketball side of it, it I, I felt like it spoke volumes uh, to me as to how serious of a situation. I mean, March Madness is a billion dollar operation and we all know how much our country loves money uh, for people to be walking away from uh, money like that it, it, it tells me how serious of a situation they have so um, I'm just going to tell you what I know I'm not going to lie and act like I know everything um, I'm just going to kind of work my way through some of these slides um, so ooh, wow. so what we know coronavirus it's so a large family of viruses that cause illness that range from the common cold to the severe upper respiratory distress. I think that's one of the bad things is it's not presenting as heavily as one might expect. And so you could be walking around with mild symptoms, not know, and sharing those things. I think that's what's contributing to the rapid spread of, of the disease. Uh, but then also, of course, what makes the news the most is the upper respiratory distress and, and a lot of what's claimed the lives of a lot of uh, folks that have, have had it. Uh, common signs of infection, respiratory symptoms, uh, fever, 100.8 is the official, uh, what we call a heat of fevers, 100.8 is the number that we're looking at. Um, cough, uh, I've heard a dry cough, uh, I'm sure you may have noticed, I'm over here coughing, lovely, um, and I, I feel fine, we've taken my temperature multiple times, um, in fact today we uh, we have 14 new employees and new employee orientation and uh, we went in and we explained to them everything that's going on we actually took the temperature of every single new employee just to uh to do it the best because i don't you probably have not heard but life care services not life care centers of america but life care services has had their first positive corona test uh, in a community that we manage in issaquah washington a little suburb outside of seattle uh, it was new employee orientation. There was an employee that uh, looked to be a little bit in distress. They decided to take their temperature. They had one. They sent them out. Confirmed case of Corona. So it, it, that really hit home too. That that really uh, got my attention. So I felt like that's some you know something we need to do. There's no surefire thing that we can do to prevent this. Um, so I, but I think we take as many steps and precautions as we can to set ourselves up for as much success as we possibly can have. Uh, shortness of breath, breathing difficulties. Those are, are common signs of the infection. Standard recommendations, regular hand washing. Uh, I have learned something, uh, I'll share it with you, and uh, had a, one of our residents who is a physician come and say, you know, you realize people aren't washing their hands, right? I was like, no, I didn't know that. He said, really and truly what you should do is wet your hands, then apply the soap, then wash your hands under hot warm uh, hot water for up to 20 seconds if not more pretty vigorously that is the way you're supposed to wash your hands and i was like all right that sounds good i don't know about that well i went i was looking at my news feed last night on cnn and they said why people are washing their hands wrong and i went and read the article and exactly what he said is exactly what you're supposed to do so i've been washing my hands wrong for 46 years um but uh all in all they say you're supposed to wet them first put the soap on and then just scrub the heck out of them. So I uh, couldn't encourage that anymore. Of course, cough covering your mouth and nose when sneezing, sneezing and coughing, avoiding contact with people exhibiting, exhibiting signs and symptoms. You know, I apologize for slamming everybody in here today. Um, 
somebody could probably say, you know, it's probably not the greatest idea to get a bunch of people uh, together in this meeting. You're probably right. But I felt like it was important um, to have kind of a face-to-face -face situation um, because going forward, we're not going to be having very many of these meetings for a little while. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But things are going to change for us for a while. And uh, I felt like it was important to get together face-to-face -to personally. We are recording this. Um, and we are going to rebroadcast it on 1960, and then we will be putting it on our resident apps as well. And that resident apps is going to become more and more important for communication to you folks. Um, we may actually put a, a button on there, uh, a coronavirus button, until uh, we don't need it anymore. But uh, um, want to be communicating with you folks. I think everybody knows the World Health Organization officially declared uh, the coronavirus a pandemic. Um, and then yesterday at 3 p.m., Governor Ducey declared a public health emergency empowering the uh, Department, Arizona Department of Health Services, uh, to implement special rules for senior living organizations. For, um, you yeah, know, there's, there's more to it, but that's the basic thing. So we're in concert with the Arizona Department of Health. We are looking at CDC all the time. Life Care Services has set up a full, uh, I'm getting emails every 10, 15 minutes from them on things that we should be doing. Um, and so uh, we are actively putting those in place. Um, up until yesterday, I was a little bit more relaxed in my approach. Today, I feel as if I was a little too relaxed. Um, and I've completely come full circle just because of uh, just hearing what I'm hearing and seeing what I'm seeing again, like I said, I might be a little overly excited, but I feel like I'd rather err on the side of caution than have regrets by not taking this a little more serious. So um, we'll find out. Time will tell. So what are we doing? Uh, we're implementing procedures that are designed to identify and uh, identify potential risks, if at all possible. So how do we do that? Something we're going to be putting in place is screening all people coming onto the campus. There's a set of questions um, that we're going to be asking people and asking them uh, about their travel, where they've been, have they been around people of that nature. Um, most likely going to be taking people's temperatures. Um, that sounds crazy. I mean, four or five days ago we were kind of laughing about it. Now today it's like, can we order more of those temporal uh, uh, scanners uh, for thermometers? So we're, yeah, I think we have 24 on the way and we're ordering another 24. Um, so we're going to be taking temperatures of all guests. I don't know what I was thinking with victors, uh, but uh, employees, uh, visitors, not victors, visitors. I was flying through this. Um, so visitors and employees will literally be checking our employees' temperatures on a daily basis. It's going to be the supervisor's responsibilities um, to do that. Establishing travel restrictions and quarantine procedures for those that fall outside of the restrictions. Uh, for employees who have traveled internationally. For, for employees who have traveled internationally, um, you're going to be on a 14-day uh, quarantine. Uh, and then you need to demonstrate that you are free of signs and symptoms that one would associate with coronavirus. Uh, the good news is it looks like it's going to be more and more difficult to go internationally. Uh, I think the one exception would be Mexico, and I think that a lot of our employees do travel to Mexico, so we're working with them. Uh, we're asking them not to, um, unless it's absolutely necessary. If they do have to, they would be subject to the quarantine. Uh, we're working through some of the challenges of, you know, most people can't go a paycheck without, with, you know, go a week without a paycheck or two, a pay period without a paycheck, and, and our staff absolutely fall into that category. So how are we going to uh, keep them whole? We're looking at those types of situations. Probably going to pay people uh, to be off the 14 days. Now, if you go after we told you to go, that one's on you. That one's going to be on you, and you're going to have to take vacation and sick. Uh, but if you went before you knew you shouldn't, then uh, that would be a little different. Uh, you know, if employees are demonstrating signs and symptoms that uh, are, are consistent with what we're afraid of, we're going to have them take 14 days off. We're going to probably pay them as well. Uh, we're going to look at everything on a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, this is uh, going to cost us some money, most certainly. Um, we're doing additional sanitizing protocol for all high-contact surfaces and high-traffic areas. 
Um, the health center, uh, and, and so when I say the health center, Nona Camp and Assisted Living and our memory care um, uh, is going to be implementing the same pandemic influenza protocol that we have. Um, and basically, what that means is we are going to continue to stay in contact with the Arizona Department of Health Services. They're going to be rolling out new rules that we're going to be responsible for following. We're going to follow their rules to a T. Um, we are on conference calls. There was one earlier today. There's another one tomorrow. They're just ongoing information coming to us as healthcare professionals as to what we should be doing, looking for any updates, any increased activity, any of those types of things. Uh, looking at our admission policies, you know, anybody coming into the health center are going to be monitored closely uh, for any signs and symptoms that would be consistent with coronavirus. Um, ongoing monitoring of our residents and staff. We want you, if you're not feeling well, stay home but call us so that we can come see you and begin that monitoring process. Um, but stay home if you're not feeling well. Um, we'll, we'll, we can deliver your meals. We can do whatever we need to do. We will get it figured out. We'll treat each one of these on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is be out and about if you're not feeling right. Um, use monitor, use the ongoing monitoring that we're using with residents and staff uh, to implement any prevention intervention. So if we see some activity and things, we're going to try and understand what's driving it and put strategies in place to prevent that ongoing um, you know, sharing of germs, whatever's uh, causing those, uh, those trends we're seeing. Uh, we're doubling down on our education and training for our staff, as well as our infection control practices. Um, the team has been maintaining and stocking up on PPE, that is professional or personal pr uh, protective equipment uh, that, uh, resident, or that staff would use in treating folks. Um, and then the other one is limiting and discouraging unnecessary visitation. Uh, that's going to be a big one. I would say um, really and truly if you're a resident I would strongly discourage people from visiting for a while. Um, I would almost kind of go into lockdown mode um, and, and just you know I had a resident call me yesterday and say hey I've got a couple friends coming in from Washington would you mind if you got in the cafe? I swear to God. Uh, coming in from Washington and would you mind if they dined in the cafe and I said oh my god thank you so much for calling and asking me I said I would really prefer they not and I'm sorry I mean you know we want everybody to feel welcome here at the village and you know, she said well then maybe we'll just go out uh, we'll dine out and I said I don't even know if I hire you I don't know if I would do that I would seriously strongly I, I don't think I would um, so I left it up to her when I you know, putting up the, uh, the iron fence and, and, and you know, locking people in. We're not going to do that. But we really are going to appeal to you to say, please, make sure you're doing everything you can do to keep your friends and, and neighbors safe. Some things we're doing in our dining services department. So uh, in the buffet, all counters are being cleaned and sanitized every 20 minutes. Uh, we have logs in place for hot and cold food runners to sign off on showing uh, that they are sanitizing these surfaces. Uh, our serving utensils that we're using in the buffet are, have been changed every 30 minutes. Uh, the glasses and water carafes are no longer on the tables. Uh, glasses are set when residents are seated and water is poured by the servers. Um, servers are using gloves when busing tables and all tables are being sanitized prior to being set with fresh linen. And then ultimately service or servers are wearing, removing their gloves and washing their hands for 20 seconds before serving any food or handling any clean dishware. So those are things that have been going on for the past few days um, that we're doing in the background. Uh, with more to come here, I'll talk about that. In our main kitchen and our health center kitchen, uh, we have signage up and we're using logs uh, that are posted and we're having all visitors and vendors sign in before they enter the kitchen. That way we have a good uh, understanding of who came in and who didn't or, and over what period of time so that way we can track anything. Um, starting on Saturday at lunch, the buffet is going to change. Uh, it's taken us a couple of days to get things where we want them, uh, but by Saturday we're looking to close the salad bar. Um, that we will have pre-plated salads available in either spinach or an iceberg romaine mix 
They'll have great tomatoes, cucumbers, and shredded carrot. That's going to be the salads that we'll have. Uh, we think it makes sense to shut that down for a little while. Uh, we will have three or four salad dressings available that your server will be able to describe to you. We'll also have fresh fruit cups available. We know people enjoy fresh fruit. If you would like to have soup, this will be served to you by your server versus you going up and serving yourself. Uh, all hot food items will be served to you at the buffet line. So you would simply go through the buffet and it would be served, you would, your plate would be served um, by one of the staff members versus everyone handling this, uh, the same tongs. Um, you will continue to go to the hot food buffet and simply just ask the person serving for what you would like. And we will continue to have a full selection of all hot foods as shown on the menu. So the menus will not change. Just how you are receiving that food in the buffet is what will change. There's an email that's going around. I had four or five residents come share it with me, and I really liked it. It was really a common sense approach uh, to this situation, and I wanted to share the bullet points that uh, were identified on there. Uh, no handshaking. Uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. This is the most friendliest place in the world, and I'm telling you to do things that are so counter to what uh, what we do here. We're so friendly, and uh, and it feels weird not to be shaking hands. Uh, I'm a big handshaker, but uh, I'm thinking right now, folks, uh, we should uh, probably steer clear of handshaking, do a little corona elbow bump, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the fist bump, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I think that it's in all of our best interest probably to shut that down for a little bit. Uh, use only your knuckle to touch light switches, elevator buttons, etc. Uh, lift a gasoline dispenser with a paper towel or use a disposable glove. Uh, again, I have become much more aware of how many times I'm using these things and how I'm a, I get creamer for my coffee every morning. Then I get on the coffee handle and I get that. It's like, wow, you don't realize how much you're touching stuff with your hands all day long. So I've become much more aware of that and trying to minimize it and or engaging in heavy hand washing uh, on a regular basis. Uh, open doors with your closed fist or your hip. Do not grasp the handle with your hand unless there is no other way to open the door. Especially important on bathroom and post office commercial doors. So the cool thing about a lot of our doors at the village is you can kind of bump those things with your elbow and open things up. And that was already something I did. I don't know why, but I did. Um, so I think that makes sense is, you know, just being mindful of when you're using your hands. Um, if you, if you can find them or if you've got them, uh, disinfectant wipes uh, at the stores um, when they're available, especially, you know, if you're pushing a shopping cart around. Uh, I noticed last night at Safeway they had a nice uh, prominent display of, uh, of those uh, pull-out wipes that you can wipe your hands off. I did mine twice. <laughs> um, so anyway, including, uh, you know, child, well, I don't think we have to worry about child, child, child seats here, do we? Um, Wash your hands with soap for 10 to 20 seconds. I'm thinking 20 seconds. I'm just reading verbatim what was in the article that we uh, looked at. Uh, use greater than 60% alcohol-based hand sanitizer. We have increased our hand sanitizer uh, locations around the village. Um, use them regularly, use them often. They don't replace hand washing. Hand washing is still, without a doubt, your number one friend. Um, we talked a little bit about the right way to do it. Wet your hands, use the soap, scrub it up. 20 seconds, nice warm water and uh, go ahead and uh, rinse them off. Uh, if you can get sanitizer, you know, have them in your home, uh, in your car, you know, just, I think, just continuously keeping your hands as clean as possible is common sense. Uh, if possible, cough or sneeze into a disposable tissue and discard. Use your elbow only if you have to. The clothing on your elbow will contain infectious virus if you have it. Uh, that could be passed, and they're saying for up to a week or more. So I think they're still kind of trying to understand well, what that is and whether or not, but I say let's just pretend like it is. Um, I think that's the safest route. Social distancing. This couldn't be any more contrary to everything that we stand for here for Jim Village. It's uh, just counterintuitive, uh, but it is a term. It's a new one, and uh, you'll probably hear about it more. Um, we are encouraging it. Uh, what is it? It's a term applied to certain non-pharmaceutical infection control actions that are taken by public health officials to stop or slow down the spread of a highly contagious disease or illness. 
If you or someone you know have symptoms of acute respiratory illness, you are asked to stay in your home until you have a normal temperature and or symptom free for at least 24 hours without the use of fever reducing or other symptom altering medicine, med medicines uh, such as cough suppressants. So if you're not feeling well, you're coughing a lot, you're having those things, we're suggesting you uh, hunker down, have us uh, bring your meal to you. Um, and uh, just kind of try to keep your distance from folks until things uh, get back to where they should be. Uh, if you have traveled internationally, regardless of country, uh, we'll be asked to practice social distancing for 14 days upon return to the community. Um, I don't know how many people have travel plans. Does anybody have travel plans? Okay, all right, well, we've got people have travel plans. Does everybody plan to continue to go on their travel plans or are they canceling them? Okay, all right. Um, so, if you're going international, uh, we really would like to ask you to uh, self-quarantine yourself for about 14 days. The idea that you went international and you have a higher chance of having it, uh, we can argue both ways, I'm sure, but that's kind of what they're, that's what they're recommending and that's what we're sharing. So, um, I know that uh, they closed things off to Europe for a while and my guess is there's more to come coming down the pipe, I'm sure it's just a matter of time, but we shall see. Um, uh, this means limiting your interaction with others, maintaining a distance of six feet from others, and monitoring your own health status. So, I mean, that's really what we're asking you to do is you know yourself better than anybody. If something doesn't feel right, stay home and give us a call, and we'll come see you and see what we should do. Yes, sir. What about the fitness center? Yeah, so in the fitness center, I know we're, uh, we're increasing our sanitation activity, or sanitizing activity over there. Um, and fitness is really important, and asking people to not uh, do it, uh, it's not, you know, we're not asking you that, but uh, I think as long as you're uh, cleaning your hands, washing your hands, and we're doing our part, um, you know, I think that that would be right, wiping down the equipment. I know we have some san hand wipe sanitizers over there, yes? Oh, for the exercise that they do over here? That's a good question. Those are things that we need to look at. So uh, we can uh, make notes and, and put that on our list of things to look at as far as making sure we're sanitizing this equipment as well. Um, talk about that here in a minute anyway. Uh, pre residents who have been close, in the close company of someone who has traveled internationally, whether the residents community or in the greater community at large, uh, within the last 14 days, and we're asking you uh, to uh, engage in social distancing for 14 days following that visit. So if your son flew in from uh, Italy, that would be a situation that we're obviously concerned about. If that's the case, we would ask you to kind of self-quarantine yourself, and like I said, raise your hand, we'll work with you and do the best we can. Um, so, if a resident is under public health order for monitoring, uh, we would need you to let us know. So if you ended up going to the doctor uh, and all of a sudden they're concerned, you've got enough of the signs and symptoms, they're, they're going to be testing and they want you to be monitored, we would want you to at least give us a call and let us know, hey, they're taking a closer look at me, I'm not sure what's going on. So at least we know and we're aware and we can manage the best ourselves. Uh, ongoing considerations. So in the healthcare center, uh, we have canceled all the events and activities. Uh, we don't uh, want our volunteers coming over. Um, we are, the activities have been canceled until mid-April, and we'll take another look at that point. But uh, if you don't need to be over in the healthcare center, uh, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to not come over. Uh, we will have uh, a little uh, set up there where the, uh, the, the volunteer sits at the desk when you come in. Uh, we will be issuing questionnaires and taking temperatures uh, for all people that are coming over and visiting. Uh, again, that's our most compromised population of all, and we want to do everything we can to keep anything out. And generally, those folks aren't coming and going much, so it's our staff coming in, which we really can't get past, and that's why we're checking their temperatures every day and monitoring their signs and symptoms. But um, beyond that, um, just limiting the amount of outside people coming in, I think it's in our best interest. Uh, in independent living, we have canceled the anniversary party. Uh, we have postponed the anniversary party uh, that was set for March 27th. Uh, 
I did not want to, uh, but I just felt like it was in our best interest to do so. Dixie? How about the Tuesday and Friday evening programs? Tuesday and Friday evening programs, I am guessing that we will probably cancel those. Uh, I'm thinking anything uh, that where large amounts of people are showing up, it's just not smart for us to do. Uh, not right now. It's not going to be fun, but I just feel like for us right now, I think we should probably shut those down. What's up, Vera? So the cafe, the surfaces are still being sanitized and that type of stuff, but we're not changing how we're serving food in the cafe or the fireside. Well, our employees, I mean, when we practice safe food handling, the issue with a buffet is you come up and you touch those tongs. I'm behind you. So when you have employees who are doing hand washing and, and, and you know, we're, we're practicing safe food handling at all times, that really shouldn't be an issue. We're going to continue to practice safe food handling. Oh, I think she means the changing of the gloves, taking the gloves off when they're finished serving, washing their hands, putting gloves back on when they're removing them. Got it. I see what you're saying. Let me, uh, I, I need to, uh, I'll have to ask Brian about that, David. What's up, Paul? Uh, has there been a training program for Yeah, I have one. I don't want to walk around. Has there been any training on how to use gloves? I had a conversation this morning with one of the carpets that happens to be. The only way I would do it is like, when he was letting me know that there needs to be because how you take a glove off and spread germs as far as six feet. Yeah, you know, that's a good one. I know we do that training over in the healthcare center, but uh, I will uh, make a note and reinforce that through, uh, through Ryan. Yes, Ed. Could you be recommending that we do not go visit people in the hospital, nor go visit people in the healthcare center? I would. I would not recommend visiting people in the hospital. I would stay as far away from a hospital as humanly possible, uh, and as well as the healthcare center. Um, unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, so, yes. Cole, I'm concerned about the menus in the cafe. Menus are one of the dirtiest things that we have. Is there a chance we can post the menus rather than using the ones we currently have? Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea. Uh, hopefully somebody's writing some of these down for me back there. Uh, cafe menus, let's, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that one. That's a good one. Okay, we'll back to you. Yes. Uh, I have just heard a tip that I think would benefit everybody, if I may share it. I read that if um, the coronavirus does better in a dry environment than a moist one, and they said if you take a few sips of water at least every 15 minutes, that it will drive it into your stomach where it will be neutralized. Mm. But if you keep it in a dry mouth, it can get into your lungs. Oh. And so I thought that was a really good tip to share. Water is always good for you anyway. Okay, another one here next. We'll work our way back up. Uh, uh, Cole, if, if one of our residents uh, contracts the virus, do you have any special plans for feeding our community or will we all still go to the buffet? So if we were to have a case of, uh, of coronavirus, uh, a confirmed case, uh, would we shut down our dining venues and start delivering food? But right now, that is not a plan. Um, you know, the size of the village and our ability to do that is, is definitely compromised. Um, it, we are talking with Morrison Senior Dining on some things that we might be able to do, but right now we don't have that as an official plan to shut down everything and deliver meals. Not yet, at least. Is there another one? All right, in the back. Who has the mic? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, within the last two hours, I got a call from uh, men. They're supposed to be our speakers at the Kiwanis program on the 18th. They aren't going to be able to come. Now, this raised a whole bunch of issues in my head. Somehow we need a board or some people that we can talk to about issues as they come up, uh, like yourself, Emily, whoever, where we can share our, the issues 
and how we're going to deal with it because we have speakers almost every week right. and uh, outside groups now are very concerned about coming into our facility sure. as we probably have to be about going or having them come into our facility. Right. We need to get some answers. Okay, I mean, so what I would encourage you to do is really what's always been there, which is either a phone call or an email through the resident apps. Uh, we'll definitely get back to you using either two of those methods of communication. Um, you know, we are going to be canceling quite a bit of stuff uh, moving forward. So a lot of those things are going to be uh, resolved through the fact that it's just canceled. Um, but I, if anybody has any questions or anything, I encourage you to email me, call me, and uh, we will get them answered as quickly as we can and be back in touch with you and kind of have dialogue exchanged in that way. It's about the best we can do, to be honest. Yes? This is about the healthcare center in Cole. I go over and have lunch with Steve every day, and they told me today that this is the last time that until further notice that I should come over. So I think they're closing it down for everybody. Yeah, we are on the health center side, and unless it's absolutely necessary for you to be there, which, you know, it's great that you go over and help Steve, but we should be able to meet his needs as well and do the best we can to keep him safe. Max, that is the uh, village still a, a voting venue for next Tuesday? Uh, is it still a what venue? Voting, it used to be a voting precinct, is it still there? You know, I am not sure, Max. Um, who, no, Kathleen is saying no. We will not be a voting venue for the next Tuesday election. So. Dan. Cole, did you say that all visitors will have their temperatures taken? Yeah, that's, we're working towards setting that up, and that is, uh, that is where we are headed. All right, Paul's coming back up towards the front. We'll keep working our way around. Um, if we have invited guests to come and eat with us at the fireside who don't live here, should we ask them to come some other time? You know, what I'm going to say is it, the answer is probably yes. That would be the safest. Um, at the very least, I think you would want to absolutely make sure that they're not experiencing any signs or symptoms, uh, and, and certainly have checked themselves to make sure that they're not carrying a fever of any sort. Um, Maybe we should tell them that we want it to be safe for them so they don't feel insulted. I, I would say that, that would be the most prudent thing is really, um, and I think everybody's going to understand, uh, and again, I don't know if we're overreacting or not, but I just feel better about hearing on the side of caution. So that's what I would say. Yes, Bob? I observe that the first death in the village caused by the coronavirus is your budget, your annual budget that you worked so hard on all that year. But it just doesn't fit the current circumstances. Um, among other things, you're going to have to go through that budget, and everything that can possibly be deferred is going to have to wait another couple of years to be implemented. Yeah, we are. The budget is going to get uh, get hit pretty hard. We're going to be paying some sick pay, depending upon situations for staff uh, or people that need to be quarantined and stuff. So we're definitely uh, going to uh, experience some, some budgeting challenges. Uh, as well as be looking at uh, our plans down the road and, and how that's going to affect us. I'm hoping, you know, we just don't know uh, how big this is going to get. I think the hardest part is that uh, it is going to get worse before it gets better because I don't think that there's enough uh, true capability of testing right now. Um, they're getting better at it, and I think as you test, we're probably going to see the rate of the incidents go up, which is going to be scary for everybody. And we're human, and we can only react how we how we react. And if I see, you know, oh my God, there's 100 cases in Arizona now. That's going to make us all anxious. Um, and, and, and that fear, it's going to have an impact. I mean, I just sit and try to wrap my mind around uh, what kind of impact this is going to have on our economy. And again, I hope. I mean, we obviously saw what the market's doing. The market is, is a very emotional market, and, and so, um, you know, we, we know where that's going to happen, but a lot of folks, uh, you know, imagine the people that work in those sporting venues and the concessions. 
probably making them a minimum wage and now they're not going to have a job or people that are in the cruise ship industry or people that are in the airline industry uh, they're all going to be hit pretty hard and uh, it's going to uh, it's going to have some lasting effects so uh, who has the mic okay Shirley uh, can we do this again numbing camp you know it, it, I'm gonna, the answer is still the same. We're treating it like the health center and we're treating uh, memory care like the health center as well. So we would strongly, strongly um, uh, encourage you not to unless it's absolutely necessary, unfortunately. Yes, Jerry. An interesting scenario, if this coronavirus is like the flu, well, first of all, it could get worse, I agree with that. Then it could get better the summer. But the paradox is, I think in fall, it's going to get bad again. So it's going to go like a yo yo. Yeah. Because I'm not convinced that the medical profession, I'm not being critical, but I'm not convinced that they're going to have coronavirus shots and things like that ready in six months. Yeah, you know, only time's going to tell, and uh, we're obviously speculating, and uh, I, I hear what you're saying. I hope you're wrong. I'm sure you hope you're wrong, uh, but you could be right. We're working our way up here. Yes? Testing had not been mentioned until just a minute ago, and I wondered if testing is available. It has been a problem nationwide. Right, and it is still a, a very big problem. Uh, basically, you have to qualify right now to be tested. Uh, you have to meet some criteria before they will actually use a test kit on you. Uh, I think you need to meet a couple of the different symptoms um, and uh, have, a, have a fever of over 100.4 before you qualify to be tested. So it sounds as if they're being um, very uh, uh, cautious with maintaining that supply. Yes? I would suggest it's time to eliminate the access to Friendship Village. Right. By not allowing visitors, only relatives or workers right. should be allowed in. So Don's taken it a little bit of a step further. What we're doing is we have not locked ourselves down. I think that's kind of what Don's suggesting. And then that step may come as more information comes available. Uh, where I was yesterday before 3 p.m. and where I'm at today is two totally separate positions. Uh, it's unbelievable for the team to have seen me this morning and, and seen how far I have swung around, and that's not who I am. Um, but uh, we may get there. Right now what we're going to do is really put it on you and strongly discourage any unnecessary visitors uh, for an extended period of time until we can, uh, you know, kind of revisit it um, so we will be testing people which helps as far as people coming in uh, taking your temperature upon coming in that's going to be helpful for us as well as asking those questions I think that's kind of the good first step and then depending upon where we end up we may have to end up going where you're at where we literally have to turn people around oh I got Peter over here real quick if, if one of our employees who has frequent Right. So if we have a server uh, in a dining venue that all of a sudden tests positive, um, that person would obviously be removed and quarantined um, outside of the village and re be receiving health care. But then how are, you know, what, what, how does that affect everybody else? Because that's one of the biggest problems is the intubation period is, is about 14 days. And so there's people walking up, you know, I mean, who, there could be somebody sitting in here right now that has it, doesn't even know, we don't know, they don't know, and it comes down. I mean, that's the biggest fear, and that's why this thing is spreading like crazy. Um, you know, I, we, we, I think we take the steps we're taking, and it's not foolproof. We're doing everything we can, uh, but it still could be fall short, and we could have a serious situation on our hands. And it terrifies me to think that. I don't want to scare anybody, but I'm not going to stand here and lie and guarantee it won't happen. Cole? Yes. 
We've got the rummage sale. Right, right. I know they've got that all set up, um, and uh, that's uh, that's lovely. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think we're going to uh, have all kinds of hand sanitizing there. Um, I don't know how well the rummage sale is going to go. Uh, this might be a, a dud of a year. We have not canceled it. Right, we'll be testing people at the front gate and uh, doing the best we can. Um, did you have, well, oh, good? I think there'll be a lot of questions. I mean, you're telling us all kinds of things, and I was just thinking my own my own memory is not going to hold it all. So you need to have a list of people that we can call, mm -hmm. and not just you. Oh, that would kill you. Right, right. So we've given uh, we're giving kind of the presentation to uh, I know for a fact Mimi. And I know we are good. Uh, I assume we're going to give it to some of our other reception staff uh, who will be able to respond to things. Um, but the reality of it is, I mean, at the end of the day, it's really those universal precautions that you were taking, uh, which include the hand washing, the sanitization, uh, and then the self quarantine if you're not feeling well, and making sure you're, you're letting us know. Those are really the biggest things that you can do. Don? Uh, excuse me. In the healthcare center, it's been a practice when you have empty beds to offer to the outside. Is that going to be curtailed? Yes, definitely. I think we are curtailing our admissions right now. Um, the admissions we would be focusing on is if it's a life care resident, a resident of Friendship Village coming in. Uh, we're still going to work with them, but as far as going out and pursuing other folks. I think we're going to want to tap the brakes on that one. Thank you. Uh -huh. we got more questions over here. I see Barb Hall has one. We'll get you, Vera. How about the Nunningham? Can they come freely over to eat in the cafe? Yeah, we're not, visitors? Yeah, we're, but we're not restricting residents um, of Nunningham from leaving Nunningham and coming over and, and, and visiting and we're going to our dining venues. Um, they're able to. Uh, we're we're going to discourage it. We're definitely going to discourage it, but uh, in the end, right now, if they have that right. Bernie? Um, the question is whether or not we actually have a situation where the virus can be transported through the HVAC system. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that is possible, then the filters that we currently use are inadequate. I checked on some. If we go to, you have to go what's called a MERV. 17 in order to be able to uh, have it uh, keep a virus from passing through the filter. So there are some things to do, but it's something we probably need to do some serious research on. Okay. MERV 17, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little uncertain as to what's been said. If we get um, someone in the village contacts the virus, uh -huh. um, are we going to go on shutdown and quarantine? Uh, I think, yeah, if, if we, I mean, we're going to have to play it by ear. There's still, as soon as we're done with this meeting, uh, I'm going to be getting together with my team and talking more about our plans. Uh, we have a lot of things that are coming together right now. Uh, so we would, we would respond or we would communicate with you accordingly. But uh, yeah, if we start to see a large uh, a bit of activity. We're going to definitely change things to where we're saying nobody can come in um, and really ask everybody to lock down and we're going to have to uh, scramble to figure out how we can accommodate everybody's needs. It's going to be quite a situation. Let me, ask, let me get Paul and I'll come right back to you. Cole, uh, if we opt to cook at home in a cottage, what would, what would effect would be on our dining dollars? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, I would just think that, I'm telling you the truth, oh, yeah. we, we can stay at home and be much more secure and uh, satisfied with our health problems. Yeah, if somebody's uh, going to choose to do that, uh, give me a call and we'll figure something out. I'm pretty fair and reasonable. Okay, that kind of locks into what I was going to add three weeks ago. Somebody suggested to me 
that um, we just have some canned goods on hand and some frozen items mm -hmm. um, and toilet paper and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck on the toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it never hurts to have good canned goods and frozen foods on hand. I think the world we live in, that's probably uh, being a Boy Scout to be, uh, to be good. Yes. Okay, there are two additions, perhaps, for canceling. And I think maybe that cancellation sheet should be available, posted someplace. But what about our area parties that yeah. Ralph referred to? Should those be canceled? Yeah, I, I think they should. I okay. think right now... Anything that isn't necessary, and that's committee meetings. Um, I think we, I really think we should be post, post, postponing those. We're going to be postponing most things. Uh, one of the things we want to do is sit down with the calendar and work our way through the rest of March and identify what is going to be canceled. And we will communicate with you through 1960. Um, possibly, uh, I, I think we need to figure it out. Uh, 1960 is a great way to communicate, um, as is uh, resident apps. Uh, that would be another one. Um, so there'll be more information coming as to what we're canceling. Also, memorials. Right, that for sure. All right, I see Bob and then Ed and Nancy. And maybe if some help, if people understand the motivation behind the hand washing, the quarantine, the canceling of large gatherings, the aim. The desperate aim is to slow down the pace of infection. If they don't slow it down, then everybody gets sick at once. And then the line to get into Banner Desert will start in downtown Tempe. Yeah, the goal is to they, uh, say to flatten the top off. That's that's the goal. And so. Um, yeah, yes. Just wanted to comment that if you cook at home, it'll, it'll probably require you to go into a grocery store. Right. And it may be not as safe as the village. It, it's true. I mean, it's it's a can't-win situation, it seems to me. Yes. Uh, I would like to remind everybody that I see a lot of people here right now holding their cell phones. That that's a big thing. You talk into it. You put it up to your ear, your hands. Please clean that a couple times a day. That is one of the usages that we can really work on. Yep. Agreed. How long is 20 seconds? <laughs> happy birthday. Yes, that's the, that's, that's the point. Sing happy birthday. Sing happy birthday. Twice. Twice. And you'll get, get up to 20 seconds. Agreed. Thank you, Dale. Any other stuff, folks? Yes, I see. Uh, yep, we'll get you next. Oh, um, I just want to let people know also the uh, ASU and the OSHA program. Uh, as of Monday, we're not having any more in-person classes. Everything will be done by a online uh, platform, so there will not be any OSHA students coming here as of Monday for the rest of the semester and probably June, and then we'll see. Thanks, Lois. Bill Lee. Thank you. I'm not trying to uh, diminish the, the emergency at all or to cause people to sit back and relax. But I talked with my daughter at about an hour this morning, and uh, she is the, the uh, public health medical director of Pinal County. And uh, so she's had, she has very concerned about what we're talking about today. And she works very, very often and cooperates with the public health medical director, director of, of Maricopa County. And basically, the doctors are, she represents the doctors at the leading that Friendship Village on its own would probably not expect or have any severe uh, trouble with the disease. Just because where we are, how separated we are, and the care that we're given, and the care we can provide ourselves. But she has a, so she thinks basically 
that any illness that's brought into Friendship Village will come from the outside. They'll come from the, our own salaried employees who live outside. They'll come from uh, the laborers that are working on the new buildings. They'll come from people that don't need camp and apartments and cottages that travel outside and come back in at the end of the day or the end of their trip, whatever it is. She has a, something that she suggests should be considered and this is for a way of, of providing assistance to investigate people coming in where she thinks the illnesses will come in to do the gate someplace. And you're doing some of these things, but it could be, I hear people talking, what about from this to this, one community or one building to another in Friendship Village, or restaurants in Friendship, Friendship Village. Okay, what her suggestion is that you have, that, and you've helped me a whole lot on this because you've got 24 new, new four take, temperature taking monitors. And what she suggests is that everyone who enters the village, regardless of who they are or where they came from, but especially those people who do not reside in the village, anyone that comes in should have their temperature taken. She is more conservative on the on the amount, the, the, the uh, amount of fever someone might have. She says anybody that has a fever, anything over 99 degrees, she says, at least, that that person should be checked and confirmed if they have, if, if, they, if the temperature is that, they should immediately go someplace to be tested and see if they have uh, anything other than, than just a cold or something. I'm losing, I'm losing people, I think. Anyway, if they suggest this, this would be uh, relatively inexpensive to do, be cumbersome. You'd have to have people to gates to do all this. You'd have to just use some kind of a piece of paper to people tell them what they're doing and what they should do. Right. But nonetheless, they would catch everybody. Yeah, well, and that's what we're doing, Bill. We are going to be checking people as they come in. We're going to be issuing the questionnaire. We are going to be taking the temps. Our temp is a little higher than what she's recommended. Uh, we're going with 100.8 right now, but uh, I think we're on the same page. And I do agree. It's most likely something that's going to come in from the outside. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to reasonably control any unnecessary you know, transmission that, that we could have prevented. All right, Shirley. And Cole, on behalf of, I think, all of us, we want to thank you very much for the way you're leading us, for your whole team. We certainly are thinking about you and praying for you and all the decisions you have to make. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was, uh, I was sitting in the healthcare center in the admin conference room today, and uh, Part of me wishes you guys could have seen this team that we have over there. It was absolutely remarkable. These folks have been drilling for things like this. They have plans, procedures. They are prepared. They're an unbelievable team that we have together and assembled. They know what they're doing. It made me feel so much better. I was really stressed out when I first walked in there. Um, but just to see all those professionals and, and be prepared and, and knowing what they need to do and that JD really giving her team the ability to exercise common sense. We're not micromanaging them. They know what to do. Do what you need to do. And so they were all empowered to go do their jobs. They were all knew what they needed to do. And I think that's going to serve us well um, in helping any unnecessary prevention or any unnecessary uh, sharing of, of whatever it is, you know. Uh, so I think we're going to do the best we can. We'll keep communicating. and. Uh, just do what we can do. Wes, yes. Uh, I'm sure we're thinking about these things, but things that are occurring here regularly, like chorus practice, bell practice, transportation to church by bus, are those, those are being considered as well, are they not? Yes, they are, absolutely. 
I, I think that uh, as much as, as church is important and going, it, it is a good thing. I think for now, we need to uh, do what is best for ourselves, and, and that would probably be shutting that down uh, for a while until we have more information and know where we stand. All right, folks. Take care. Yeah. Yeah, wait, I got one more over here. I'm sorry. What do we got? Yes. Beer? I'll just re I'll repeat it if you say it. see where we stand after but uh, construction will continue those people really aren't coming into the village they're isolated behind the construction area so that's not an area of concern for me um, as far as how it affects the village so that will continue all right I think we're done thanks guys appreciate it